The other major, uh, major update at, the, at this point is that uh, we, we had been hoping to, la to launch our, our pre-sale on February 1st. So this is the, the way to get, it, to get into Ethereum finan financially, financially, which would be that we would be selling Ether at, at a rate of, two, of 2,000 Ether for one Bitcoin. And Ether would, be, would become the, the internal currency of the, of the Ethereum network. So you would be able to set, you, so Ether would be like the, like the BCC in Bitcoin or, or like the XRP in Ripple. It's sort of the glue that holds the system together. If he, needs to, if he wants to run a contract, you would have to pay transa transaction fees de denominated in Ether. It, and if you want to exchange, exchange between two different assets on the Ethereum network, chan chances are Ether would be the, the, inter the intermediate th currency that you would be doing it through. So it's sort of like the, res the reserve currency of the network. Now, so that would, so the up, so the way that you, so we were hoping to launch the sale where you where you would be able to buy, to buy ether for Bitcoin. We had to delay that for uh, a combination of reasons, partially in order to better flesh out our flesh out the business plan, partially in order to better uh, better flesh out flesh out the terms, partially for for legal reasons. So we have. Uh, and we have been working hard at all those things all the way through fe February and, and the first week of March. So from an organizational standpoint, our current situation is that we have an, an entity registered in Switzerland. And the reason why we're looking at Swi Switzerland as a jurisdiction is because, first of all, we, Switzerland is very well known for its uh, very, very f friendly banking laws. It's uh, much easier to do any anything related to innovative finance in Switzerland than it is in something like the United States or even Canada. Another country we were looking at was, was Panama, which has some similar properties, but we decided that Switzerland is likely to be more stable. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, is that we're working heavily with Open Transactions. So Open Transactions is the group that's trying to essentially do cryptocurrency technology based off of a, feder a federated server system, where there would be, there would be ser servers, except those servers would actually would actually be publicly auditable, and and so you could actually ver so the technology so Open Transactions technology allows you to do a lot of the same things that Bitcoin does, except with much lower fees. You could do high frequency trading, 10,000 transactions a second, almost no charge, you could do microtransactions. And at the, now it, it, it's not going to be deep blockchain based and decentralized in the same way Bitcoin is, but the, server, the servers are auditable, and so it's, uh, it's very low trust in that sense. If Mt. Gox had been running, running an OT server as their backend, we would have known. We would have known something was up. They would not have been able to get away, to get away with uh, disappearing for four hundred million dollars worth of Bitcoin out of existence. So that's so we're working heavily with open transactions in Switzerland. We have some very we have some. We're working heavily with uh, the, the Swiss government, and uh, we will have more updates on on that uh, coming soon. So we are definitely uh, quite uh, quite close on that front. Um, Right. So, in, so the other thing I, I would like to talk talk about today is uh, is to hopefully give an give an introduction into some of the some of the deeper levels of, of how the Ethereum technology works.